One of my favorite 3D printer upgrades that's become a bit more of a standard is the use of tool head boards. While this started with breakout boards, which are still better than nothing, firmwares like Clipper allow us to use a completely independent controller and MCU. Some perks of this are cleaner wiring thanks to less cables, to freeing up ports on our primary controller, and in many cases giving us an always available accelerometer. Up until now, most of the boards out there for custom builds and upgrades are using CAN bus. We previously covered the process of setting this up, and it's been stable on my printers running it, but it can be quite cumbersome. Variables like whether you're using USB to CAN or CAN bridge, controller specific requirements, and configuring the CAN network leaves a fair bit of room for error. Myself and many others have been eagerly awaiting the arrival of tool head boards that are running over USB. Well, earlier this year, LDO delivered with Nighthawk, a two-piece tool head board built specifically for the stealth burner running over USB. These have pretty much been out of stock since launch, but I was finally able to place an order for one earlier this month. So in today's video, we'll dive into Nighthawk. We'll go over the board's specs, what's included, how to set it up, and I'll give you my thoughts along the way. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. To not confuse anyone, the specific board we're covering in this video is Nighthawk SB, or Stealth Burner. LDO has shown that they're releasing Nighthawk 36, which is in the more traditional NEMA 14 36 millimeter form factor, and another version for the Orbiter. Let's first run through the specs. Nighthawk SB is designed in the same two-piece configuration that was originally created by Hart K. This gives you a separate smaller board for connecting to the hot end fan, layer cooling fan, and LEDs, making it easy to remove when servicing your tool head. The main board is powered by an RP2040 for its MCU. It also has an integrated 2209 driver for your extruder motor, an accelerometer for input shaping, and tachometer enabled fan ports that allows for fan speed detection. It'll be interesting to see if Clipper can take advantage of that and maybe have your printer throw an error if it detects that there's something malfunctioning with your hot end fan. Additional ports on the board include a 24 volt three pin probe, hot end thermistor, heater cartridge, XY end stops, and chamber thermistor. There's also unpopulated through holes that look like they can be used for filament runout and something called SU that I didn't find any additional info on. Finally, we have the USB adapter board. This small board is really where the magic happens. It takes USB input from our Clipper host and 24 volts directly from the PSU, which it then combines into one nice cable. In addition to the boards, the box includes a handful of mounting screws and a variety of crimp connections should you need to recrimp anything. You also get a USB-C cable, a power cable for 24 volts, and a really long umbilical cable that runs from the USB adapter board all the way to the tool head. I'll be installing this into my Voron 2.4. This came from an LGO kit that we completed assembling over on the ModBot Army channel about a year ago, and so far I haven't done any modding to it. My plan is to go away with the X and Y cable chains when I install Nighthawk, and instead use an umbilical cable with PG7 glands. I really love the look of cable chains and how it helps to keep all of the wires contained. However, I've had issues with them chewing through my cables and over the years, I've seen many others have the exact same problems. The sleeving on the included cable is rated for chains and I know this is strongly a personal preference, so there's nothing wrong with sticking to them. Also, after having done the install now, I can say firsthand that transitioning from cable chains and not having them added quite a bit of complexity that I'll touch on as we go through this. Before doing anything, I highly recommend making a backup of your config. I might sound like a broken record at this point, but if it saves even one person from losing their settings, then it's worth it. Link is in the description to the video I made on my favorite backup method for Clipper. The first step is to remove any existing tool head board and wire harness. The LDO 2.4 came with a two-part breakout PCB. One thing I discovered while taking off the front of the stealth burner is that the fin and RGB PCB are identical between the Nighthawk and the one that originally came in my LDO kit. So if you're upgrading from an LDO kit, then that part of the install is already done and there's no need to swap over those boards. I removed the tool head board mounted on the side of the tool head and began removing the X and Y cable chains. While removing the Y cable chain, I realized that I was going to have an issue. Without the cable chain, there really isn't any good way for me to route the X and Y limit switch wires. 
So I decided I'd be switching to sensorless homing and removed both switches. For anyone keeping the drag chains, Nighthawk has an XY end stop port that you can connect to as an alternative to running them to the main controller. Moving into the electronics bay, we'll remove the breakout board that the harness connects to, as well as all wires coming off of it and into the controller. Since Nighthawk has its own MCU that will be connected directly to Clipper Host, it really frees up this main controller. With the old parts out, we are ready to start installing Nighthawk. We'll start by attaching the adapter board to our DIN rail. In the GitHub repository, there's a few STLs to print out, with one being the part needed to mount this board. It uses M2 by 10 self-tapping screws to attach it to the mount and DIN adapter. Once installed, take the included USB cable and run it from your Pi or Clipper host to the adapter board. Then connect the pre-crimped power cables to your 24 volt power supply and that same adapter board. You can connect the main umbilical cable at this point, but I recommend holding off and prefer to work from the tool head back down to the electronics bay with it. Another complication with me ditching the cable chains and going with the PG7 glands is that it required depinning one of the connectors. The one of the tool head is glued in place, so I removed it at the other end. Before doing this, I snapped a couple of pictures to make sure that when I reinstalled the wires, I had the correct orientation. Back at the stealth burner, the main Nighthawk board is in the same form factor as the default breakout board, so you just use the existing standoff and screws to attach it. Once installed, connect all of the hot end, probe, and extruder wires to it. It's fairly easy to see the silk screen on the board, but you can also reference the nice diagram provided in the documentation. Then route the umbilical wire back down to the electronics bay. For my setup, I found a model that adds a PG7 gland to the back right corner of the printer that I printed and used. If you're sticking with chains, just open up all of the links and run the cable through there. There's another printable file in the GitHub repo for cable chains that tilts the drag chain up to help it clear the XY joints. Depending on the size printer you're installing this onto, you may have a fair bit of extra cable. My 2.4 is a 300 millimeter version, so there was definitely excess length. Rather than trying to shorten it, if you have cable raceways, I would just route the extra length through there and then connect it to the adapter board. That's really it as far as the physical installation and we're ready to move on to configuring firmware. One of the sweet things about Nighthawk is that it comes pre-flashed with Clipper and the Catapult bootloader, which really helps to expedite the initial installation. Because of this and it just being a USB device like any other controller, I'm not going to cover the flashing process. There's instructions available for this if needed, but it's not something you should have to do to get up and running. Power on your printer and make sure that the Nighthawk board is lit up and getting power. Then SSH into your Clipper host. Username and password will depend on what you're using and whether it's a default or something that you may be previously set. In my case, I'll open up a terminal window and type SSH modbot for the username I set at the IP name assigned to my printer and hit enter followed by my password. Once connected, type the command on screen and hit enter to list all of the serial connections. If Nighthawk is wired up correctly, since it comes pre-flashed, you'll see it listed here. It'll say USB Clipper RP2040 and a unique serial ID. Take this serial ID and copy it somewhere that you can access it shortly. If for some reason you don't see Nighthawk listed here, double check that you've got everything wired up correctly and that you do indeed see status lights or lights indicating power on the Nighthawk toolboard. If you're still having issues, the next step would be to actually use the docs to recompile Clipper and Catapult, or just reach out to wherever you got your Nighthawk board. The last thing we need is to configure our main printer.cfg file to include Nighthawk and update all of the pins with the new ones. In the GitHub repo, there is a config file, but it's pretty bare bones. Because of this, I found it easiest to just copy and paste things from here directly into the printer.cfg file rather than maintaining a separate one for Nighthawk. Start with the MCU NHK section and replace the serial connection with the serial ID you copied just a moment ago. Then go through each heading and copy the pin from the Nighthawk config into your printer.cfg file. This is a fairly simple process because there's not so many connections that should only take a few minutes. If all goes well, when you restart the firmware, you should be up and running. Thanks to my decision to ditch the chains and go sensorless, I had to spend a fair bit of time getting that set up, as well as the new Z humming position and the new clicky dock location. I'm really happy with the end result and think it looks great, but 
Just be aware of the added work you'll have to go through if you decide to go down the same path I did and ditch the XY cable chains. If you opt to just run the cable through it, it is a much quicker and simpler install. I've only had Nighthawk up and running for a few days at the time of recording, but so far it's been mostly positive. I have however received an occasional error during my probing sequence that says communication timeout during homing probe. This isn't an error that I've ever seen before, so of course I did a bit of digging. Most of what I've seen is CAN bus related and seems to be when someone doesn't have the bitrate set correctly on their CAN network. I did however see someone else in the Voron Discord having the same issue running Nighthawk. Restarting the firmware does clear this error and I'm able to then continue in print, but I need to do some more digging. My current theory is that Clipperhost, or in this case my Pi, is just having too much data being sent to it rapidly over USB and it's causing it to sort of freak out. I'm also running a 4K printer camera and a few times when this error occurred, the image seems to drop frames or lose signal altogether. When I have a chance, I'll probably swap the Pi 3B that's in here for a Pi 4 and see if it resolves those issues. Hopefully this video didn't scare you away from wanting to perform the upgrade. My goal was to be fairly thorough in covering the process, and if you go the more standard route, I really think this whole thing doesn't need to take longer than maybe an hour or so. I'm really excited for new toolhead boards to hit the markets and love having multiple options for different printer builds and upgrades. And that has been Nighthawk SB. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of your questions. If you do have any additional questions, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if I don't know the answer to those questions, I have no problem reaching out directly to LDO to try to get those answers for you. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below on USB toolheads versus CAN bus toolheads. And if you've been running Nighthawk, I know that it's been out for a few months now. I'd love to hear what your experience has been like. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Deanna from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.